You'll see there you have your note sheet out. Just want to suggest something to all of us this morning that we are all led by something. Let me say it like this. We can all, we can all be led by something in our lives. Our companies can lead us. Our boyfriends, our girlfriends can lead us. Our relationships can lead us. But let me suggest to you that there's, that there's no leading like the Holy Spirit's leading when the Lord leads us. It matters who you follow. Let me say it again. It matters who you follow. So I want to talk to you. You see your note sheet there? Uh, can we say that out loud to get a, the title there at the top of the note sheet? How to be led by the Spirit. Let's all try it again. How to be led by the Spirit. In other words, learning how to follow the Lord. Now, we're going to look at the children of Israel. We're going to read a portion of Scripture. It's, it's, it's fairly long, but stay with me. And we're going to see how they were led, and then we're going to pull some principles out of how they were, they were led by, by the Lord. This is Numbers chapter 9, verse 15. For those who are new, I want you to read with me if the, the words are up there. It says, on the day the holy tent, the tent of the agreement was set up, a cloud covered it. Let me just, let me just pause right there. Keep, you can keep the verse up there. Let me give you a little context. The children of Israel are leaving Egypt, and they're on a journey, and they're going through the desert, and they all have tents. One of the first things they do is set up a tent called the, the tent of meeting where they would meet with God. And that tent was always set up in the middle of the camp, and about a million Israelite families would camp out around the center of this tent, the tent of meeting, or the tent of the covenant, where the Ark of the Covenant was. Okay, now we're, we're going to pick it up with just that little insight. It says, from dusk until dawn, the cloud above the tent looked like fire. Verse 16, the cloud stayed above the tent, and at night it looked like fire. When the cloud moved from its place over the tent, the Israelites moved. And wherever the cloud stopped, the Israelites camped. Verse 18. So the Israelites moved at the Lord's command, and they camped at his command. While the cloud stayed over the tent, they remained camped. Sometimes the cloud stayed over the tent, for a long time, but the Israelites obeyed the Lord and did not move. Sometimes the cloud was over it only a few days. At the Lord's command, the people camped, and at his command, they moved. Are you getting the picture here? But he won't stop. It just keeps saying it over and over. Let's, let's keep reading. Verse 21, sometimes the cloud stayed only from dusk until dawn. When the cloud lifted the next morning, the people moved. When the cloud lifted, day or night, the people moved. The cloud might stay over the tent for two days, a month, or a year. As long as it stayed, the people camped. But when it was lifted, they... Are you getting the picture yet? What's happening here? Let's keep reading. Verse, verse 23, at the Lord's command, the people camped, and at his command, they moved. Okay, learning, you got your note sheet out there, learning to follow the Lord. How to be led by the Spirit, by the Spirit of God. Number one, the first thing that we all need to remember and keep before us is that God is a moving God. Come on, I want you to say that with me. God is a moving God. He does not stay fixed in one place forever. Now, for those who, uh, I'm, I'm, this is a thanking church. I just, I just want to encourage you to lock in right now. This isn't one of those messages where you can read a text, check an email, and then look up and pick back up and keep following along. You're going to have to track with every little piece of the puzzle. It's all as, as we journey here, okay? God is a moving, come on, say it with me. God is a moving God. 
He does not stay fixed in one place forever. Well, where in the world is he going? God is always going to a better place. He's always wanting to take people, those who will follow him, he's wanting to take them to a better place. The Israelites were in Egypt. God sent a man by the name of Moses. Pharaoh, you know the story, let my people go. So they they leave Egypt But they didn't leave Egypt just to camp in a desert place or just to camp wherever and just kind of go. No, God wanted to lead them to what the Bible says it was the promised land, a land that was much, a place that was much better than where they were. Now, the only problem where they were, uh, it was comfortable where they were. Uh, But it was a, if you know the story of Israel, it was a learned comfort. It was a learned, you might say, a learned helplessness. Um, You know, it's almost like a caged animal in a zoo. As long as the Egyptians feed us a little food and and they take care of us, we'll we'll just be okay. Uh, We don't have too much expectation for better things. And so there was a contentment to stay where they were until God sent a man by the name of Moses. God is always about trying to move people to a better place. It's the same even today when God in the fullness of time sent his son Jesus. Jesus was announcing to people that there's a better place than where you are. And it's the same with all his messengers since then. I'm carrying on in that same tradition today in the 21st century. I'm announcing to people that there's a better place in him. Come on, you hear this you hear this morning? A better place in in him. The Lord intervenes, wants to take us to a better place. Now, the insight there, there's no fill in the blank here, so just get ready. Just be happy. No anxiety here. I just want you to read this statement with me, this this insight. Let's read it out loud together. When it comes to the poss touch somebody and say possibility. Touch them right here. Touch, 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 touch. By the way, it's so nice not to be wearing a mask. And I'm not wearing one proudly, because it's just all vaccinated up. <laughs> Freedoms are coming. <laughs> Amen. Possibility. Come on, say possibility. possibility. When it comes, come on, say it with me. When it comes to the possibility of experiencing something new or better, we have to be willing to move away from where we are. There has to be an openness, there has to be a willingness to let go of what we've been holding on to for so long. Come on, you hear? Now, the Spirit of God is not just, what are you talking about, Pastor? We're not just talking about uh, geography. You can move a thousand miles and still be sitting in that same chair every single Sunday morning. But something has shifted in you mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Movement. Again, God (laughs) is a moving God. Well, that leads us to a very important question. Well, Pastor Charlie, how in the world, and we're trying to get there, how in the world do I know when it's God moving? How do I know when it's right, when he's speaking? How do I know when is the right time? That's what we're talking about, being led being led by the Lord, being led by the Spirit. So let's go back to the scriptures here. This is verse 18. Read with me. The Israelites moved at the Lord's command, and they camped at his command. Okay, so when he commands, okay. While the cloud stayed over the tent, they remained camp. Sometimes the cloud stayed over the tent for a long time, but the Israelites obeyed the Lord and did not move. Sometimes the cloud was over it only a few days. Again, at the Lord's what? At the Lord's command, the people camped, and his command, they moved. The Israelites moved. Now listen. The Israelites moved when the Lord moved. 
If he stayed at the campsite, the cloud stayed at the campsite for a long time, they stayed a long time. If it was just, if, if the family, I can't, put yourself in their shoes just for a moment. They, the, the cloud comes to a stop and they, they, they set up the tent of meeting there for the Lord. Then everyone camp, starts camping out, starts setting up everything and finally get your, your carpet rolled out and your tent and get all the, the stuff out and start cooking dinner. And someone says, look at the cloud. And it starts moving again. You're like, oh, seriously? <laughs> we just got everything. How inconvenient. <laughs> Lord, is that? Well, the idea was God was not following them. They were following him. I'll say it again. God was not following them. They didn't know how to get there. Didn't have the perspective, the sight, the vision that God had. They were following him. And I'm going to suggest something to you that this is still the main goal. This is still the main objective for us today. We do not make our decisions, the final decision, based upon how we feel. Come on, I know you're still glad you came. You still smile at me. We're talking about being led. You can be led, by, by the way, by a lot of things. But we started off by saying this is, we're going to learn how to be led by the Lord. By, by the way, the Lord is the one that wants to take us to. He has the ability to take us to a better place. It's not my present circumstances. It's not the present reality. That is the deciding factor where I go, the direction of my family, the, 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 the course that I set for my life is the Lord's prerogative in his alone. Jesus comes along, says basically the same thing. I am the light of the world. He who what? We're talking about learning to follow the Lord. He who what? Follows me will not walk in darkness. It's hard to get somewhere when you're, when you're walking in darkness. and It's doubly hard when, you're, when you don't know it's darkness. Just charging ahead and going. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. He who follows me. He who follows me. He who follows me will not walk in darkness but have the light. Have light. The light of everlasting life. I love what he told his first disciples. It has not changed to me. When he walked up, Peter, James, John, walked. He's one of the first things out of his mouth. Follow. Come on, say it with me. Follow me. Follow me. You don't have to get all stressed and anxious about all the other stuff. Just follow me and I will, I will, I will make you be the person that you that you want to be, that you're called to be. Follow me. Follow me. So, number two, our main job, as I said earlier, our main job, we can make it super complicated. Israelites will take you to the promised land. You got one big job here. It's not even to form an army. What if people come and attack us while we're here? No, no, no. Your main objective is to follow me. What are we talking about here? Be led. Be led by the Spirit of God. I alluded to this earlier. We can make calculations. We can look at our budget. Uh, I can imagine the Israelites set up camp. Oh, this, this looks like a nice, comfortable place. We, we should stay here for a while. We, we can make all those kind of calculations, but if we make our decisions solely based on those criteria, then we have to know that we have stopped following the Lord. And we're following what the Scripture says, the arm of the flesh. What is that? You're following mere human nature. Do you remember what Jesus and Peter were having a conversation and Jesus let Peter, his, one of his best friends, in on what was going to happen. He said, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to be arrested and tortured. 
eventually be killed, but on the third day, I'm gonna rise again. And Peter says what? No, that's, that's not the plan. That doesn't make sense. Look what Jesus says. This is, this is Mark 8, 33. Jesus reprimanded Peter, said, get away from me. Is it up there? Yeah. Come on. Jesus reprimanded, reprimanded his friend and said what? Get away from me. Now, now I'm going to stop right there. Just, I'm going to slide this in there and just stay with me. Uh, I just, you're a th- we're a thinking church. Jesus forever redefined what really, what the satanic is. I know it's a scary, you know. It's not like a person turning green and their head doing 360s and pea soup, you know, coming out of their mouth. and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. I mean, that, that makes for a good movie. But in real life, you know what that looks like? It's just a person living their life and making their decisions solely based from a human vantage point. No reference to God. No acknowledgement of him. Lord, what do you think? Again, we can follow. We can follow a lot of things. Jesus told Peter, you're seeing things merely from a human, from a flesh perspective not God's perspective not God's Paul said in Romans 8 8 those who were in the flesh what does that mean those who are in the flesh those who are merely living their life from a human vantage point that's it what's the scripture say cannot please God okay there's a warning there in your notes a warning for all of us There is always the possibility, there's always, doesn't matter how long we've walked with the Lord or maybe this is brand new for you, there's always the possibility of us moving away from the Lord. I put in parentheses or we might say just just getting lost, getting lost, moving away from the Lord. What does that look like? Thank you so much for asking. Two tendencies. Basically, all of us in this room can fall in these two groups, and you probably lean towards one or the other. I was thinking of my own self. I definitely lean towards one of these, but I've also bounced back and forth. What are these two tendencies? Well, the one tendency is when God moves, we tend to, to wait too long and God's cloud has already moved, but we're still sitting there, and the result is he's gone, and now we're lost. You have that there in your notes? There's the possibility of being left behind. What's that mean, Pastor Charlie? Of waiting too long, being unwilling to move. So, wait, 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 what are you talking about? God has moved, what do you mean by that? God has spoken to you clearly, over and over and over again about something and you you haven't moved on it yet, you're still hesitating, you're procrastinating. And here's the thing, procrastination is just the same. It's a nice way of saying disobedience. I'm still waiting, but God's spoken. So it might look something like this. Um, um, Mom, would you come up here and join me? Good morning. My lovely mother. Hey. The founding mother of our church. Amen. We have good, we have good spiritual shoulders that we're standing on. So let's just imagine in this scenario that uh, mom's camping here. Now mom would never do this, so this is just <laughs> this is just an analogy, okay? And I'm the cloud or the spirit of God. And so we're camped out, and, and God begins to move. What do I mean by that? God, be, you just stay here. God, God begins to move. That means God speaks. Hey, you know that, um, that job you're in is keeping you from serving me. And I've told you that. And it's also keeping you away from your kids at a vital time. And you need to leave that job 
and start looking for another one. Come on. I want to take you to a better place. Come on. You know, that, that church isn't like the one you grew up in, but it's a good church. It's a safe church. Why don't you jump in just 100%, take foundations, take next steps, get water baptized, give yourself totally to serve the Lord. Come on. Come on. And the Lord speaks, and the Lord speaks. Hey, it's about time you start serving me. You've been sitting in, you've been sitting in church a long time, and that's great. Why don't you start helping Team Orange facilitate miracles? Come on. Come on. We get further and further and further away from the Lord until we're lost. Now, here's the thing. I was praying for you this morning. The Holy Spirit is here. God has not given up on you. You're here for a reason. And I feel like in my mind, I was praying for some of you, it's like the Lord's turning around and again speaking to you because he loves you so much, saying, come on, come on, let's go. Stop your waiting, hesitating, procrastination. The Spirit of God has spoken to you clearly. Now get up and put your confidence and trust in him and allow him to lead you. It matters. It matters who's leading our lives. Now, but for some of us, it's not, you don't, your problem isn't, isn't, isn't waiting. For some of us, our problem is we get out and head. Now, in our church, when we grew up, in our church, we would, we would sing a song, the cloud of glory is moving. Move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. The cloud of glory is choir moving. Move with the cloud. You gotta move with the cloud. The cloud. Now, <laughs> someone get me the piano. I wonder if we can sing some songs. Some old school songs. So, you know, I was thinking about that. You know what our church never sang? But it's a reality. We never sing it like this. The cloud of glory's not moving. He's not moving. Why are you moving? The cloud of glory, he's not moving. Well, then that gets, now we're going beyond just a nice little message to getting down to the, a little deeper. How do I tell? That's what we're talking about. How do I tell when he's moving and when he's not moving? When he's speaking, when he's talking to me, that's what. Some of us, the challenge is God's not moving. What do, you, what do I mean by that? He's not speaking. He's not telling you, but you jump out and head. The result's the same. I start leaving. I start moving away from my help and my strength and my blessing. So it's like I can, I can see some of this in, in my mind's eye. We're, we're yoked up with the Lord, but, you know, start pat, you know, tapping the desk. You know, you saying something? Oh, he's not saying anything. I think I thought I heard you say something. Yeah, you, you said something all right. Surely, you might... Surely this, this uh, opportunity, this job opportunity, this must be from you. I, I, there's, there's no way I can pass this up. Come on, Lord. I moved. Have you seen how beautiful she is? She's gorgeous. <laughs> Have you seen how handsome he is? <laughs> I know they're not interested in, in marriage, but I can't let this pass up. Just... Now, hold on. 
Some of us have lived our entire life always getting out in front of the Lord. And it's left a, a wreck, a, a trail of pain and hardship just littered behind your life. And just as the Spirit of God is speaking for some of you, you've just been waiting and waiting, waiting, and God's saying, come on. I haven't given up on you. Come on. I want to take you. I can see things. You can't just trust me. I'm going to take you to a better place. Just the same way as God's coming back, I feel like for some of us, you've gotten so far out. You're so lost. You're so far out and ahead of him. And yet in his goodness and his kindness, he's saying, come on. I don't follow you. That's why this isn't working. You follow me. He's like, come on back. Come on back. Come on back and rest in me. And Holy Spirit, we just pause right now in this service. Lord, I pray for that. There's many of us. Lord, let today, Lord, let today be a day of clarity and new beginnings. Lord, I thank you that you, it's your, always your intent, Lord. We can trust you to move us to a better place. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. All of us said, amen. amen, amen. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let's just make it real simple. This is going to blow your mind. You'll be like, Dr. Charlie, all that schooling was so worth it. It's so deep and profound. You ready? What does it mean to follow the Lord? Be led by the Spirit. Let's just make it so, so like deep. What does it mean? It means that we, we obey, listen to his voice. His guidance, his nudging, him speaking to us. We just listen. Okay, Lord, I'm gonna follow you. Which brings us to this, this question here. Oh, goodness. How? How? How do I know, Pastor? How do we know when the Lord is speaking to me, when the Spirit is leading me? And I see we're completely out of time, so we're just going to have to pick this up the following Sunday, okay? Let's bow our heads. Just put your notes away. The Spirit of the Lord's already here in a special way. Lord, you said, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. Lord, there's many under the sound of my voice who are living far below the abundance and the, the riches, Lord, that you offer. And I pray, Lord, that today, 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 let today be a miracle Sunday, a turnaround Sunday, Lord, as we again, Lord, begin to allow you, as we learn to allow you to lead us in Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. All of us said, amen. that was an awful week, amen. All of us said, amen, amen. We wanted to thank each and every one of you for your generosity throughout this season. It truly does not go unnoticed. To partner with us financially, just simply text the word GIVE to our church phone number. 
571-209-5000. As always, help is just a text away. Send the word CONNECT to 571-209-5000 and a member from the team will reach out to you. Love you, Community Church. See you next week.